All right. Welcome again. So today we are going to do yet another experiment, which is having again a good practical implications in our day-to-day -day life. We call we are calling this experiment as banana ripening. Yeah. We are just calling it as banana ripening because we are using bananas for the experiments. So you are not stopped for using it for any other fruit. Now what we are going to do in this experiment? We are going to follow how our banana is getting ripened as a function of time and as a function of temperature. Right? Why it is very important? It is very important. Let's say this is our roughly a map of the country. Right? Somewhere here down south you have some bananas uh, plantations are available and you have to transport it somewhere here in the central part of the country. There is a big long distance what you have to travel. Right? Now, you have to make sure you know, at a particular stage to harvest banana so that while it is getting transported by road and reaching, let's say it's take couple of, it takes a couple of days to reach out there, so it ar arrives in a perfect condition because on route it is also getting ripened. If you already are harvesting banana in a fully ripened state and then you are transporting it, by the time it reaches the desired destination, it is all spoiled. No money. Right? From commercial perspective, it is extremely important at what stage you are going to harvest the banana so that it reaches there. Likewise, if you are just transporting banana from here to the local market. What's the point in harvesting the banana in a pre-ripened state? It has to be sold immediately, right? So you harvest the banana at a particular uh, time so that it is almost ripened on the trees and then you sell it there and there. Now, how we are going to do it, right? Let's rub it off so that we have some space. A very simple concept, right? Very simple concept. So, what we are going to do? We are going to take bananas, right? Is the spelling right? B A N A N A. Yes, that's right. So, uh, then uh, we are going to take bananas. We are going to put it at two temperatures: room temperature and 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Once done, then we are going to measure some parameters. Let's see what those parameters are uh, in a minute. So then we are going to measure some parameters of that banana at day zero. We are calling it as D zero for both of them. Um, uh, and then we are going to do it on day one. That is 24 hours of incubation. Okay. And then we are going to do it on day two. And finally, we are going to do it on day 3 for both the temperatures, right? So what, we, what are we going to measure over here? We are going to measure the monosaccharides. What are the monosaccharides? Glucose, fructose and sucrose, right? Now you might have noticed that as the banana ripens, it becomes sweet. How does it become sweet? You have to begin with, in an unripe banana, everything is like uh, starch. Yeah? That starch, right? So this starch breaks down to these soluble uh, monosaccharides, right? Glucose, fructose, and sucrose, respectively. Difference is these are all water soluble. And this is insoluble, water insoluble. Yeah, water insoluble. Okay, now as and when banana ripens, the water insoluble starch breaks down to water soluble monosaccharides right easy now uh, both of them belong to the carbohydrate family so the detection will be this uh, we are going to use the same method but then how are we going what exactly we are going to do 
what we are going to do every day we are going to take banana right day 0 or day 1 day 2 day 3 and we are going to divide it into two halves right you take this banana something like this you cut it in the middle and keep the two halves and take 15 grams from each half right then you nicely macerate it right with water filter it through right so whatever is the water soluble monosaccharides will come through right filter after maceration this is slightly different because we are wanting to see the total carbohydrate content over here so you are going to treat it with sulfuric acid few drops of sulfuric acid you have to be very careful that if you are going to add too much of concentrated sulfuric acid you are going to uh, burn the carbohydrates rather than just getting uh, just break down them right so even the starch breaks down into some soluble uh, 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 oligosaccharides and then uh, you macerate it and then you filter through right now what is interesting you are estimating the total carbohydrate content you are estimating the soluble content now remember what I said as a function of time right and soluble monosaccharides it increases right so what happens so uh, total minus the soluble you do it for every day this uh, difference should go on decreasing as you move forward right now this is exactly what we are going to do a very simple concept we already had done uh, this kind of uh, uh, estimations previously using different methods so after filtration we are doing what we are going to treat them with phenol right and we are going to get some colored complex that we will show you the 5% phenol solution and we are going to measure it using colorimeter all right so let's get started uh, but for today's experiment we have sonali with us right Mayuresh, you help us. Sandesh, hello. Right? Can you please walk past Sandesh? He's exempted. It's his birthday today. Right? <laughs> Happy birthday, Sandesh. And of course, Rupesh, can you turn around and show yourself, Rupesh? He's there. So it's a teamwork what we do. Now let's see what all bananas uh, Sonali has got for us. Hmm. All right. So we have these bananas over here. You can see. Rupesh, can you focus over here? They are almost same. They all come from the same bunch. And we had made, uh, taken care that they are not uh, ripened already when we got them from the market this morning. Right? So this will be our day zero. Our control. So what extent of ripening is there? Then we are going to check whether the ripening can be halted by putting them at 4 degrees. So we are going to see this after three days yeah also we will be uh, putting uh, them in minus 20 one of them in minus 20 and one of them in minus 80 then we are going to see the effect of temperature we are going to put these three at room temperature right this will be processed tomorrow this will be day after and the following day on friday this will be kept at 37 degrees right so let's wrap them up in the newspaper and then put the room temperature one over here yeah so i have those these newspapers here right let's gently wrap them up and put it here that's day one i can hand it over to sonali here this is the day one room temperature day two my you can help me with the 37 degrees 
So he is wrapping up the day one thirty seven. So this is the room temperature day two. And this is the room temperature day three. This is room temperature day three. Fine. And this one is the thirty seven degrees day. Can I have the tray? Sure. Okay. Now, these are the three which we are going to keep at thirty-seven degrees. This will be processed tomorrow, day after, and the following day. These are the three we are going to put at the room temperature in the lab in the same uh, lab where we are working here. So we are going to put them here. Can we have the labels, please, so that there is no confusion later on? This is day one. Day one, room temperature. This is done. This is done. All right. So that's day one, thirty-seven degrees. That's day two, thirty-seven degrees, and that's day three. Thirty-seven degrees, right? So we can lay them here. Where should we put them? Oh, we can keep it here. We can keep it here, so nobody should touch it. They should be here, like this. And this we are going to put in the thirty-seven degrees, right? Let's go to the thirty-seven degrees incubator. Can you focus on the temperature there? Yeah. So it says and we hope we are opening it. And there goes my no. Let's put day three first because we are going to take out at last, right? So let's put it at the back. That's day two. I'm putting it here, and that's my day one, which will process tomorrow is right here. Then we close it again, and there we go. Yeah. Now back to take care of the other bananas. is here again so that's our day zero this we i am handing it over to sonali for today's processing this will be our control we have to compare our ripening with reference to this banana and one of these we are going to put at 4 degrees one at minus 20 and one at minus 80 to see if we freeze things at lower temperature does it halt the ripening process right let's put them in their respective temperatures
this is the four degree a normal fridge we are putting it here one we are putting it minus 20 you can show the temperature there We had made space to make sure nothing else is there in this drawer. And this is minus 80. You can show the temperature again. Let's see where we have more space. It's stuck in which one? Huh. let's keep it here because there is more space here so we are putting it here at the lower bottom let's move the other things aside and let's quickly close it. Let's try to open it up a bit. Still haven't ripened it. Yet. Still unripe. Completion. And this is what we are going to process. A bit difficult. Or maybe we can just cut it. Nice and easy. Right, and we keep it aside for the processing. And can we have the room temperature? A1. <coughs> right, this is the room temperature. A1. Can feel it's full. Straight away cut it. Still quite unripe. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Okay, so this is day two, 37 degree banana. Let's try to open it up. Yeah, slightly soft than what it felt the other day. It says day two, 37. Let's try to cut it through. Yeah, it's softer. And that's the day two room temperature banana. Let's cut it open. There you go. Right, so uh, we are going to look at the day three banana. Actually, we didn't process it on day 3, which was supposed to be on Friday. But because of rains, we couldn't come. And today, it is the 6th day. So this is like 37 degrees. Can you see? It is too soft. Too soft. And if I... This is 37 degrees. It was supposed to be day 3, but we are processing it on uh, day 6 of incubation. Remember, day 0 was the first day when we started the experiment. But this is like day six we are processing the day three sample now i'm going to cut open the 37 degree um, incubated banana for day six right let's try to cut it open it is already leaky quite leaky Ooh. it is extremely soft it has ripened completely and i'm finding it difficult to even cut it, it <laughs> Am I doing it from the right side? No. no, from this side it should cut. Yeah. That's it. Can you see? It is so soft. Like that. Now this is the day 6 at the room temperature. Right. This is the room temperature. It's If you can see it is quite hard compared to my 37 degrees. So definitely 
without even doing any experiment one can say yes temperature does have an effect does have an effect yeah i'm trying to cut it open remember on day zero this banana was really green now the color has changed to yellow you can still see the greenish tinge on this side and it is a bit hard but certainly softer than the day one on day zero let's move them aside for further processing on day zero we had also kept some of the bananas in three lower temperatures the four degree so we are going to have a look how they look up at the day six after six days of incubation this is like day um, four which are supposed to be on friday the fourth uh, day starting from t0 but we are looking at it on sixth day right when we try to cut it open this is like four degrees celsius right let's try to open it still quite hard quite hard although i'm able to cut it but still it is almost uh, as unripe as it was on day one now we also had one banana kept at minus 20 i cannot cut it yeah but also see there has been a good color change at minus 20 i cannot cut it right now so i have to thaw it so i'll keep it at room temperature and again i will uh, keep it aside for further processing and look at this the minus 81 yeah minus 81 yeah ultra frozen really hard let me make a sound to let you realize how hard it is right even it's quite hard here and it actually is a stone you can use it as a paperweight yeah for some time until it is so hard so for these two i cannot cut it with my knife so i have to thaw it before i can process it yeah and let's see after processing what result do we get does it stop the ripening process maybe may not be but let's see what reading do we get all right so this is how we process the bananas right so we had already got it into two parts we had already demonstrated right and then you cut it through and then we have 15 grams each right 15 grams each remember we said like we are going to divide this banana into two parts right so this is how we had done can we just make a little bit space so it goes can i have the knife please right now uh, why don't Mayuresh you take over so he what Mayuresh is going to do is going to uh, chop it into the small pieces so it, the maceration becomes a lot easier it goes easy yeah there you go right take a mortar and pestle put it through all of it add 10 ml of water so what we had seen for uh, uh, 15 grams of banana 10 ml water is good So he's measuring the 10 ml. Yeah. You can show it on the uh, in the camera. Yes, it's 10 ml. And it's a cold water. Yes, it's a cold water. I forgot to mention. Yeah, we don't want any breakdown because of the warm water here. So, and he's going to macerate. It's quite a task, huh? So it's not that straightforward it takes some time right you have to make it nice and homogenized right nice and homogenized see it works good oh it slipped yeah yeah it makes quite some noise isn't it so he's 
finding his own way of uh, macerating things still going on as you can see it is getting mashed up and you really have to make a nice slurry paste out of this yeah water is important because you when you macerate you want all of those water soluble monosaccharides to get dissolved in water nice and steady nice and steady we don't want any of the water to spill out else uh, we will have the wrong estimate of our monosaccharide right so likewise uh, sonali can start doing the other one yeah again she is chopping into small pieces here uh, mayuresh is doing this maceration same process for the other side also for the other part other 15 grams yeah nice and easy smaller pieces right so there it goes okay 10 ml water please cool water okay, you can pick it up and see if it is 10 ml yeah just 10 ml there it goes and there start the maceration again the second half noisy so she also decided to pick it up and do it in her hands it's good so let's see how mayuresh is doing quite well yeah so far so good okay are we done no no not yet not yet it it really has to be fine paste isn't it yes yeah so see, not done yet. Yeah, that's a clever bit, putting a tissue paper below the thing and then start doing stuff. Uh, still going on. As I said, it's not very straightforward. Huh? So it takes some time and patience to ma macerate it. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yeah, he's making some paste over here I you can turn by turn show the procedure for both the sides at what stage both of them are nicely blended these alleys are almost approaching the spoon we are doing alright are we done Mirish? Almost there, right? Yes. Yeah, he's almost there. Can you see how we started and what kind of paste we have got? Okay. Uh, you, you just have to use enough water, right? Not too much of water, else you are going to dilute your monosaccharides and that will affect the estimation. Just enough. Can you see? Yeah. It show them the consistency. Move it with the paste. So it's just a paste. Right. It's just a paste. Right. Nice and easy. As you would do in uh, cooking also. You might have seen the similar kind of consistency you use it. Now, meanwhile, uh, Sonali is macerating this. Uh, we can filter this. Yeah. No. So the acid will be the, in the other part what Sonali is doing. This is like uh, the soluble uh, part. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Rupesh, can you come on this side? Yeah. 
So that's the filtration assembly. We are going to use, uh, take some help from the vacuum because it's quite thick. It's not going to be straightforward. And we are going to put a paper, a filter paper. It's a normal filter paper. We have cut it in uh, a disc uh, form, right? So we are using two just to make sure things are all right. Yeah. And uh, before we filter them, let's wet this filter paper a bit. Can I have some water, please? Yeah, because we don't want any of the uh, oligosaccharides. Wet the filter paper. Just wet it. Drain the excess water. Put it back in the funnel here. And see where, if we can put uh, Mayurish is uh, sample in here. Mayurish, can you put some sample through? There it goes. There it goes. Yes. Nice and easy. Spread it. Yes. Nicely spread through. Right, and can we turn on the vacuum, please? Yeah. Can you see? Drip by drip, drop by drop, it's coming through. Right, here, whatever is falling down in the conical class will be our soluble monosaccharide. Oops, some froth formation, but it's okay. Right, froth formation. Now you have to make sure, like whatever you collect over here, you do a centrifugation because some particulate form uh, also will get accumulated over here. So you have to make sure you are not using those particles here. So whatever we collect here, we centrifuge it at uh, 10,000 RPM for two minutes, and we just take the filtrate, right, the top bit, right, and whatever settles down, we don't use it for our experimentation. Okay, it is still going on. Let's wait over here. Okay. Get to those tubes. Okay. And this is how uh, it looks after filtration. Right after fil centrifugation and filtration followed by centrifugation can you see it is quite nice clear solution right the other half which we will uh, show it to you which needs to be treated with sulfuric acid followed by the similar procedure it looks pretty much like this right both are fairly clear so you sent uh, you uh, filter it through you centrifuge it and nice and clear solution you use it only the supernatant right and this is what we uh, the other sample also is ready for us nicely uh, macerated this needs to be treated with sulfuric acid right can we take it to the fume hole for sulfuric acid come change at this stage. Uh, 
Uh, can you turn off the reception, please? Lights are off. And uh, Mayuresh can tell us that if you add too much of sulfuric acid, how does it look? If you have that solution. Right. So, if you have too much of starch, then uh, the stage which uh, Sonali had showed you, it will look pretty much like this. All right. So now, in formation of phenol, your complex also is uh, pretty much uh, reddish in tinge. So this burning of starch is going to interfere with the phenol complex. So make sure you add just enough. Two to three drops of sulfuric acid is good enough not much, right? And to the filtrate, yeah, so we can uh, proceed further. You have to make sure we have these filtrates already, right? So, all right, so uh, we take 200 grams of this filtrate. Which one should we take first? Let's say all the monosaccharide. You can take 200 microliters. of these, yes. Yeah, you can show it on the pipette, it's 200 microliters, yes. There, you add it in the tube. To this, you add 1.4 ml of water, of course. Distilled water only, not a tap water. Set it on 700, put it twice so that will make it uh, 1.4. Take it in a beaker. Can I have some uh, beaker for the water, please? That's water? Yes. Okay, that's the water. You can take 1.4 ml of water. That goes 700 microliters, another 700, that makes it 1.4 and to this we are going to add 400 microliters of 5% phenol solution. That's the 5% phenol solution. See, it doesn't have its own color. Alright, it doesn't have its own color. Okay, there you go. And finally, you add 2 ml of sul uh, sulfuric acid. For that, we have to go to the fume mode again. Right.
much can you show here to fish if you add too much to begin with right of sulfuric acid during the processing this color already is without addition of phenol right now this is going to interfere when you want a complex like this right so that is uh, will give you a wrong reading you might overestimate uh, the carbohydrate content if you do something like this so what we are going to do so we are going to add just enough of sulfuric acid and then we are going to add phenol and you can we can already feel it's quite hot of course it's expected you are adding that concentrated sulfuric acid to water yeah so you have to let it come to the room temperature right we, uh, we already have those samples at room temperature so it's quite hot so you have to let it allow to cool down so i'm keeping this sample over here but we have the other samples already all right now uh, this is what is the soluble uh, saccharides over here right and that's the starch content right so what you have to do you have to put it in the cuvette over here cuvette like this right fill them up till here and then you have to measure it over here now this phenol complex is supposed to be measured at 495 nanometers but we don't have 495 the nearest wavelength is 505 right so we are measuring at 505 right in one of my previous experiments i had mentioned this the estimation of uh, iron in uh, uh, vegetables and different food arti articles we had already mentioned what if if you don't have the exact wavelength where you want to measure right and um, is it like the battle lost for us no it's not the case it has been nicely explained in the previous video you can have a look at over there now can you uh, for demonstration purpose can you just show the value of uh, one of these things here yeah. blank yeah we will take the blank we will take the blank it's everything minus uh, starch or monosaccharide right minus starch and do we have a tissue yes we have to clean it again repeating myself in one stroke from top to bottom right and then put it through and say blank auto zero right so the value has been adjusted to the baseline has been adjusted to zero yes okay now it's the time to measure the complex yeah let's see let's take this one Okay. Now, as the first sample was blank, it's okay to measure the sample just like that. But between the two subsequent samples, you have to do a nice thorough washing of the cuvette. And see, it gives a net numbers. Okay. And this is what we have to do for all the different days right day 0 day 1 day 2 day 3 both room temperature and 37 degrees and then uh, let's see on the board what are the readings we have got right so th these are the final readings for our banana ripening experiment so day 0 was the first day when we got the banana right there was no 37 degrees here because we had just 
measured whatever value we have got. So low 37 degrees here. Day one, yeah, the, what we call as day one is our 24 hours of incubation. We did incubation at room temperature and 37 degrees Celsius. These are the values what you have got. All these values we should note down by pausing the video. Right? So you have an increase uh, for the soluble monosaccharides and at 37 degrees it gets more. Again, from uh, 24 hours incubation, this is like 24 hours of incubation. Yeah, and it's not coming nicely. And another shock. This is like day one is 24 hours for us, right? This is like 48 hours, day two. Yeah, again, you would see. Now, don't get tricked uh, when you will see it is 0.85 to 0.96 uh, value over here. Please note down this is 2 times diluted, 2x dilution. Here also 2x dilution. So you have to keep in mind the dilution factor when you will uh, ca uh, calculate uh, back the original concentration, right? The concentration of the soluble monosaccharides. Likewise, for the room temperature also, it's a 2x factor over here. Now, day 3, we, uh, we, uh, we couldn't um, measure. So we did it on day 6 because we couldn't come because of heavy rains here. So day 6, room temperature, the dilution factor is 2x. But for the 37 degrees, the dilution factor jumps to 4 times. Right. So uh, in our spectrometer, we don't go above value 1. To keep the, the OD value below 1, we do these kind of dilutions. And then you have to do the uh, uh, calculations accordingly to take care of these dilution factors. Now the fun part, on day 0, we had also kept the bananas at 4 degrees, minus 20 and minus 80. Now we had left these bananas for 6 days, like our day 6 uh, incubation ones. So these are the values for the 4 degrees and these are the values for minus 20 and these are the values for minus 80, right? So on day 0, we had frozen, uh, not frozen, kept banana at 4 degrees, 20, minus 20 degrees and minus 80 degrees and these are their values when we had measured it on day 6, right? So now you have to do a calculation and make your conclusions like what kind of profile or trend do you observe right and what is the effect of uh, freezing these bananas at minus 20 or minus 80 degrees right with this i sign off uh, for this experiment thanks